How have you found preparation for this game, Dara? Obviously, we're all in strange circumstances, but it's been particularly disruptive for Italy because there was at one point where whether we weren't sure whether we'd have a game or not. Um, yeah, I think it's probably been up in the air a bit. Well, obviously, we heard the news and that, but uh, we've just been preparing as if as if we're playing a game, and we've just stuck to everything normal. We flew out here um, two days ago, and we've settled in now out here, and we, we trained yesterday for the first time, and I think everyone's. Everyone's just preparing themselves for the game properly because at the end of the day, we know we're playing Italy on Tuesday. So I think we just got to focus on ourselves. Mm. Were you disappointed to miss out in the senior squad this time around or is it softened by the fact that it's just such a big game for the 21s? Uh, no, not, not at all, really. I suppose when you have such a big game coming up against Italy, um, you, you want to play in it. And I suppose I've, I've played a big part in the, the campaign so far. So... I suppose it's nice to continue on um, where we left off and I mean, we're top of the group here at the moment so who wouldn't want to play in a game against uh, an Italian side to, to, to stay uh, top of the table. Did you learn anything from the senior squad experience that you can take into uh, this camp with the 21s? Yeah, I think any time you go and you play with new players and obviously more experienced players, you pick, yeah, you pick up habits off them, you pick up little bits and... I suppose the setup was kind of similar to the 21s with, with, with Stephen stepping up, so I was kind of used to it in that sense. But yeah, it's just little aspects of players' games, um, small habits that you can pick up and I suppose bring into entire setup here at the 21s. And probably more relevant experience now, Dar, is the fact that you're now a Premier League regular. How have you found the first few weeks? Do you already feel like you've adapted pretty well or are you still learning the ropes? Um, I mean, I'm still going to be learning until the they retire so but it's 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 been a massive step up um i mean the players are a lot, lot sharper and just a lot overall better um but yeah i'm, I'm just learning I'm, I'm i'm grateful to be playing games i think it's the it's the best way to learn is playing games and obviously playing at the highest level is only going to improve me in the long run so yeah i'm just really grateful to to, to be playing at the moment and uh just cherishing the opportunities yeah like, obviously, you've already played a few high-profile opposition in the Premier League. Was there any moment or any opposition player in which something happened in which you reflect on and said, "Why wow, this is Premier League, like this is this is next level stuff? Um, I suppose the first game, I think it was kind of a, an awakening to, into what the Premier League is like, playing against a team like Leicester. Um, but, I mean, we had a tough run in with, with Leicester, Everton and Chelsea as our first three games. So, I think... I kind of had to to learn quickly that what I was getting myself in for playing against teams like that, and yeah, you just kind of have to adapt to it. Um, I don't think it's something that you're really you're really ready for as such because the difference between the championship and the Premiership is, is, is such a big gap. Um, from from what I thought, so yeah. Thanks, Dara. Secret. Hey, Dara. Um, we we also what happened with uh, Aaron Connolly and Al Moida there last week. Just how difficult do you think it is preparing for these international matches with coronavirus restrictions? Like, does the possibility of a, a positive case within the camp play in your minds? Um, I think it's just the times we live in now. I think everyone um, has got to come to the, the conclusion that we have to accept it and that we have to be, uh, we have to try to make ourselves safe and put each other in uh, safe positions. But I think obviously Everyone in the camp understands that there's a there's a high possibility of that, but I think you can't dwell on it too much. You've you've still got to prepare, right? You've you've, you've got to do the things that you've been doing previously. But obviously, in the back of your mind, you have to remember to to keep your, keep everyone around you safe. Um, there's been a, a lot of, a lot of talk about this under twenty one side, and I suppose rightfully so, just given your results and where you are in the table. Do you feel? A pressure now to go on and actually finish the job, especially given that the the senior side won't be at the Euros next year. Um, I don't think there's a pressure as such. I think uh, us ourselves as a group, we know what what's what's there for us. What's at the end of the road, and that's qualifying for uh, the European Championships, which hasn't which hasn't been done before. So be making history if we do. Um, I think that in itself is a is a massive incentive to all the players, and obviously playing for your country is one thing, but Having that little, that little, I suppose, treat at the end, if, if you do qualify, you make it to the European Championships is massive. And I don't think any player would, would back down from that. So I don't really feel there's pressure on us as such. Um, I feel like maybe there's pressure on individuals, but I don't feel like there's pressure on uh, the team as such.
Okay. Uh, and just coming back a wee bit to, to your time at the Premier League so far, I uh, suppose so when you left Dublin a couple of years ago, did you did you envision reaching the top flight, or is this something that's kind of just happened? No, I think from a young age, it's always something you want to do, and it's. I suppose when I signed for West Brom, my, my goal was to to make it into the first team and, and play there. And obviously, for us to get promoted last season from the Championship to the Premiership is massive, and it's a it's a dream come true for me and I suppose any young lads as well. So I think it's always something that you have to have in the back of your mind if you wanna you wanna play at the highest level, you have to be ambitious. And obviously, I'm grateful to be where I am now. Right, thanks, Tara. Paul Neil. Uh, Gareth, you can, you can go ahead and be the stuff I want to ask before you ask, so go ahead. Okay, yeah. Damien Spellman. Morning, Dara. Um, Dara, the, the, you've packed such a lot into the, the last year. Has it been a, a bit of a whirlwind for you? Um, yeah, it's been amazing, I think. Uh, obviously, the, the year we've had with the 21s and then at club level as well has been amazing. Um, played a lot of games, I've learned a lot as well, and it's been really positive all in all. Yeah. Working under a manager in, in Slaven Bilic, who, who was an international defender, how much of a help has that been to you? Yeah, it's been it's been amazing. Obviously, I think his reputation speaks for itself. Uh, the teams he's managed, the teams he's played for too, and uh, he's been amazing with me. Obviously, it's nice having a, a fellow defender, um, I suppose, coach me and mentor me and add little bits to my game that I wouldn't have had before. And yeah, it's just it's just great having a someone with that much knowledge there um, helping me along and obviously giving me opportunities as well. He's he's, he's not afraid to play young players in a, in defensive positions, which is unbelievable for young players because you want to be playing at a young age and if you're given the opportunity, you want to go out and showcase what you have and improve that way. Mm-hmm. And, and looking at the situation in the group, give, given given what it could mean, what a win could mean, does this does this feel like a cup final almost? Um, I think every game at international level is a cup final. I think you've got to go out there and, and give it your all. Um, I mean, it's one of the best feelings in the world is is, is, is putting the Ireland jersey on. So to get the call up in the in the first stage is massive. But then, yeah, you've got, you've got to treat each game like a cup final, like you said. Um, obviously, this game is a is a lot of importance to it. Um, playing against the top seeds in the group, so. Obviously, we want to go out and we want to give a good account for ourselves and we want to go out and win. That's the main thing. That's good. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. OK, I'm going to split to the daily section now, OK? Um, this is embargo for tomorrow. Uh, on Couser. Your mic on. <laughs> uh, hey, Marla. Uh, where did you watch Thursday's game? Uh, we all watched it at the team hotel, so... Uh, we all watched it together here uh, in Johnstown House, even. All right. And um, what was it like? Like, Were you watching that, thinking that there's your chance gone of going to that finals next year, which puts more of a priority now on this one? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think us as a group, we were all watching as fans. Um, obviously, we wanted the, our country to make it to, the, make it to the Euros, but at the end of the day, it wasn't to be. But I don't think it was ever the case of... Uh, Adding a bit more pressure to us, and um, we've always knew what we had to do to qualify. And I think we've been separate to the seniors in that sense. And we've known there is no pressure on us really. We haven't qualified before, and that I think ourselves we know that we should be qualifying with the with the players we have. Yeah, and just uh, can I ask, what's it like playing the games behind closed doors? Because I'm just thinking Tala last year for this fixture, the place was bouncing. Where, well, Tuesday night is going to be well dead again like what's that been like yeah um, i suppose it's just been normal now with all the games being played but it's it's obviously not ideal um football is, is is run by fans i suppose in the way that you want to have an atmosphere there at your games and i think now with, with no fans there you can't have to create an atmosphere between yourselves um on the pitch i mean it's a bit weird at times when when the ball goes out of play and everything's silent but um I think we just have to adapt. Obviously, the lads have played with no fans before. It's been an ongoing thing for the past while. So um, I don't think it will have an effect on the game. It will, uh, we'll just have to create our own atmosphere. All right. Thanks, Tara. Thanks. Mark McCudden. Cheers, Gareth. Hey, Tara. Um, I suppose just the, the mood in the camp, it's been 11 months since your last game. Um, 
is there a, a confidence now that you can uh, win this game on Tuesday? Yeah, definitely. There's a huge confidence. I think the group of players that, that Jim called up um, are all great players and all players who are who are doing well for their clubs respectively. Um, and yeah, I mean, we have to take the momentum that we've had from the the, the last games here and, and bring them into this one. And obviously we're top of the group for a reason. So uh, we've, we've, we've got to believe in ourselves and go out and show... Uh, and show what we can do, basically. Excellent. Just from your own point of view, again, I spoke or asked Darlie about this last week, but you're working with a, a top defender, a former top defender, at club level, and, a, and now at international level, John O'Shea. I mean, like, what what has he done for you so far? Uh, has he taken you to one side, or has he been kind of giving you little tips of advice? Yeah, like he's took the defenders in sessions, and he's he's feeding us information. And I think for us as players and defenders, it's the information he's given us is invaluable and I mean he's played at the top level he's done so much in his career and now obviously he's a coach too but he's been great even just having around the the camp um just on a day-to-day basis without football he's, he's, he's a good guy and I mean we have to seep up everything he gives us and and be like a sponge around him and, and take up everything because I think if if us as players can do anything that he did in the game we'll uh we'll, we'll be very lucky who did you grow up supporting uh, when I was younger, I supported United a bit, so he would have been a player that I suppose would have looked up to as a as a defender. And do you remember him winning the Champions League and I suppose winning all those Premier Leagues and so on? Yeah, definitely. I think obviously when you're younger as a kid, you you pretend you're players in the in the playground or out on the pitch, and obviously with the name O'Shea, I always said I was John O'Shea when I was younger, so it's it's a bit surreal, obviously. Yeah. I'm now a person. I think I saw him last season, and um, we played him against Reading, and I had a little chat with him. But obviously, it's nice now to to chat to him on a day to day basis here and kind of pick his brains with stuff and and, and get information out of him. Well, so it was an easy decision to make when it came to getting your getting a name on the back of your jerseys when you were a younger kid. Yeah, that's it. fairly straightforward. I just say, just finally, in terms of the Premier League, like, are you? Are you surprised at all that uh, as how how much game time you've been given so far, or did you come into the season expecting that kind of that kind of uh, game time? Uh, I don't think I come in expecting anything, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like as a player, you you get what you deserve, and you you have to work for it. So um, I myself knew I had to work hard this pre-season again to put myself in the eye line of the of the gaffer to choose me, and obviously. I've played so far and it's been great, but I can't really rest on that now. I've, I've, I've got to keep going. I've got to stay in the team. And that's my aim. I want to play as many games as possible and I want to have a, a successful season for West Brom. Super. Thank you. Thanks. Aidan Fitzmaurice. Morning, how are you? <clears throat> um, just ask you about what we've seen the last couple of days, how serious COVID can be. You look for Aaron Connolly and Adam Eaton not being able to play and then Italy, their game off just as a player how difficult it is compared to maybe this time last year what you have to worry about how just explain how difficult it is now what you have to go through as a footballer to, to make sure that that COVID doesn't stop you individually in your team yeah obviously it's unsure times and I think um, obviously it plays a part with Italy's game being called off and I suppose the lads uh, in the senior squad being ruled out of the games it's 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 weird and it's, it's something that we have to come and come to, to terms with and I think something that we have to respect now as well um, as a group of players we know that we have to keep ourselves safe and there obviously is a chance of, of someone picking it up but I don't think we can uh, can really think too much into it we just got to do what, what we do on the pitch and, and hopefully everything off the pitch uh, takes care of itself I mean, you've, you've got to hope that clubs won't take against this that say, imagine it's not ideal for Norwich and Brighton to have the, the two lads away and have to fly them home. I presume your clubs are keeping an eye on what's going on. I mean, that's uh, is that in the, in, the, in, in the back of the mind as well, that, you know, for football to work, you know, for, for your clubs to allow you to keep coming away to play for your country, that, that things have to be done right and that, that things have to go smoothly? Yeah, obviously us as football, as we want, we want to go away with, with our international teams and we want to play. So obviously if the club's did look at it that way, it wouldn't be ideal. But then again, it's 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 the times we live in. I don't think anyone knows for certain what's what's going to happen. So I think we've just got to respect it and, and move on with it. I presume you got sympathy for Adam, you know, the two lads. I presume you got sympathy for the fact that they couldn't play. What would, would have been a huge game for them. Aaron would have started and Adam was on the bench. But I presume you feel sympathy for them. They couldn't play a part. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they were here at the 21s group and we've seen them go up and 
being involved with it now and everyone here involved is, is absolutely buzzing for them and then when we heard that they were being ruled out, I think everyone was shocked, surprised, and obviously they fell for them as well. Um, obviously, we know uh, the 21s, how much of an impact they could have on the senior squad. And, uh, yeah, it's tough for them, but uh, obviously it's one of them things that's happened now, and them themselves as players will know that obviously they have to move on with it and, and don't feel too down by it. Very so. John Fong. Tara, how are you doing? Uh, How you doing? Yeah, just um, you know, in terms of the team camaraderie, does it help to the fact that a lot of you have played together? You know, quite a few years were at Kevin's together, um, but the, the sort of the backbone of the team has been really together since under fifteen, under sixteen. Um, yeah, I suppose it does. I think whenever we go away as a group and we meet up, everyone's just great friends, so everyone's really looking forward to seeing each other. Um. Lots of us have grown up playing together. Um, there's lads that have been added in, and they've they've kind of bonded with us as well. And it's become a family more than anything. I think everyone buzzes um, when they get the call up to come away, and even more so when you realise that you're meeting up with your your best mates and you're going to be playing football with them for a week. So I don't think, or so I think everyone themselves is, really looks forward to it. And obviously there is that camaraderie between the group, and it's it's yeah. All I can say is it's it's a big family at the end of the day. And you mentioned earlier that these are sort of tournaments that, that you should be qualifying for. Like it's a very refreshing attitude. It's probably one that Stephen would have spoken about at the start when he took over the twenty ones. Is that the the attitude sort of going to big nations like Italy that you know you're looking to win, not just take a point and maybe take our chances then? Yeah, we don't fear anyone as a group. Um well when we go out we know we're gonna win each game. We know that we have the quality in the change room to win each game and the mentality too. Um, I think, obviously, the result previously against Italy, I think other Irish teams maybe would have been, been happy with it and celebrated it. But if you went into the change room after that game and you seen the way the lads were, I think it was more disappointment and, and, and devastated um, that we'd only come away with a point there. We wanted to win and I think that speaks a lot for, for the group as itself, uh, with the mentality and obviously... The, the culture that Stephen brought and, and the culture that Jim has now here. All right, thanks, Derek. Yeah. Okay, guys, let Derek go. Derek, thanks very much.